Right. Okay. If you can see this, thank you so much indeed for inviting me. Um, and uh, I'm so glad to be here since I was almost here eight hours earlier and got it wrong. So it's it's very nice that we live in this very much, as you said, it's in a digital world and it'd be helpful if some of us got our time zones correct. So anyway, I'm here now. So I want to introduce myself a little bit. Um, I am the uh, editor-in-chief and co-founder of Block Leaders. Uh, and I want to explain just very briefly why blockchain is so important to me and also why NFTs are amazing. Um, a little bit of back history. I have a very... I have a very normal corporate career. Uh, my first job, I'm Irish, my first job was working with JP Morgan in London. I worked all around the world in Sydney, Australia. I had a great time. I got married, came home back to Ireland, as we often do. And then I hit the 2008 financial crash with a divorce at the same time. <laughs> Not a good idea. And um, I don't advise it anyone get divorced in a, in a recession. Anyway, it kind of ended up that I, um, big house, big mortgage, X went back to the UK, became bankrupt, gave all the debt to ourselves. We got a cash offer, banks refused sale. It's kind of a convoluted story. We ended up losing the house and my business collapsed. But in the midst of it all, I became very activated because there was this narrative in Ireland and possibly around the world too as well, that people were failing financially because of their own badness, you know, some sort of notion, whatever. And I, I was the first female banker under the new laws here because the banks repossessed the home. And um, I was very cross. People were being blamed for failing financially and it hurts, but it's not... It's, it, I didn't steal and I didn't kill anybody. And the law here in Ireland was such that we inherited from the UK that as a bankrupt, you weren't allowed to run for public office. So it was still seen as somehow a criminal bad thing to be. So anyway, I took the Irish government to the High Court and all the way to the Supreme Court. And I argued because I wasn't allowed to run for public office as a bankrupt. And I argued my constitutional rights were being infringed, changed the law. And then in 2014, I ran in the European parliamentary elections and I got 11 and a half thousand votes, which was amazing. Um, not enough to get elected, but enough to make a difference. So I've been on this path, traditional fintech, journalism, PR, marketing, and then there's all this activism, crazy stuff, whatever. And then, so my life went quiet. And then a year later, I met blockchain. I went, ah, oh, this makes sense to me. So I jumped all in and I spent the last four years traveling the world pre-COVID, uh, chairing and speaking at blockchain conferences because I do think this transformational technology and cryptocurrencies themselves are just fantastic. It's just a way to break the clutches of that inequality that exists in this world. So I'm very, very excited. And then what's interesting, what we're here today for NFTs. We keep on thinking, those of us in this industry, I'm, I'm only four years, so I'm only a new person in this space. We keep on thinking, when will people start to come on board? And last year was a summer of DeFi, decentralized finance, but didn't really, ha didn't really work. I mean, there was a lot of activity, a lot of value change, but unless you're a trader, I'm not a trader. It didn't really happen, so it kind of passed me by. And then NFTs, non-fungible tokens arrived, and they exploded, and they are going to change the world in terms of blockchain and mass adoption, and it's just fantastic. And why are NFTs exciting? In brief, NFTs, non-fungible tokens, um, we're pretty much all non-fungible tokens. You are, I am, my desk is, a laptop is. Fungible tokens are like things like currency that can be swapped like for life. But the problem was when the internet was launched, it was all about copies. So it was just a question of, you know, you sent copies. And I, I know we had the dot-com boom in the 90s when he was like, oh, the internet, they'll never buy books on the internet, never sell clothes on the internet. Of course we do. But even still, up until the era of NFTs, it was all exchanging copies of stuff. I send you an email. It's a copy of something else. Whereas NFT is unique. It's a, a non-fungible token. You can actually say, I'm sending you the original in a digital form. So it's really exciting. Um, then, um, sorry. So we're watching this space, right? And you know this, I'm just gonna just, but I wanna say, just talk about them briefly and why it's important. The Beeple sale, we, you've heard about that. It was a 69 million in Christie's, 5,000 days of um, recorded digital images. Well, a lot of work, but it basically has been paid like 14 grand a day. Nice work if you can get it, that's pretty cool. Kings of Leon, they launched their um, eighth album as an NFT with Yellow Heart in the UK and they sold it for 2 million. Uh, the tweet, Jack Dorsey sold his first tweet ever for three million in the end. And Banksy, the, actually the last one, that was a picture that was sold in 2018. When the person bought it, I think it was in Christie's, they shredded the picture. And then this chap who calls himself Burnt Banksy, although apparently he's been outed, he decided to take a picture of another image by Banksy called Morons. You, you know this, he took a picture and then he burnt it. Very hard to burn apparently, but 50 million it was burnt. And then he sold the NFT that he paid uh, $95,000 for the original painting, but he sold an NFT of it for 300 plus. Interesting. So why are these important? They're important for a couple of reasons. First of all, people, he's proving 
uh, that art can be owned and can be sold. That's a fundamental thing. And it's, it's not just art, I'll talk about more, but art, one of the key um, uh, use cases. Kings of Leon, what's interesting about them is that you will be aware that most artists will sell their music on Spotify, they stream it. That's great for us as consumers. We pay small money, we have access to all the music we want. But we all know, it's like Amazon or Facebook, the, the artists get paid very little money. So when Yellow Heart set up Kings of Leon to do their eighth album, and apparently it was a mediocre album. I'm not a music critic, so I don't know. But the fact that it sold two million did two things. One, it, it proved it could be done. And secondly, and also they did incorporate a digital, uh, uh, sorry, a um, physical version. You could buy the vinyl too as well. But they also allowed for, um, uh, the, it meant that the majority of the money went to the Kings of Leon. And actually they set up a fund for the, the uh, roadies. And so they like made 80% of the money. How cool is that? Whereas if that was on Spotify, they'd make 0.001%. That's really cool. The Twitter thing is interesting because social media is art. It's a thing. It's art. And I know because I'm a writer. And when I write a nice tweet, I go, oh, that's nice. And that was just kind of cool. And the Banksy thing, yeah, it's, just, it's mass adoption. We're getting there. So it's kind of cool. So those are big ones we all know about. They're important because things are happening and people are starting to recognize and understand. So this is some, just some real examples. And I love these. So first, the first one there, the, the funny face, is from Graffiti Kings. It's a UK-based company. Darren Cullen is the Graffiti King. He's very well, he's very famous, he's very well known in his area. He says vandalism, vandalism uh, saved him from a life of crime. <laughs> and he is a graffiti king. Uh, he does a lot of teaching, he does a lot of selling, he does a lot of Hollywood comes to him. And he is in, before COVID, he would be encouraged his teams to go and do murals of, of major Hollywood films on the side of buildings. And they would do time lapse video videos of these films, of the, the installation of the images. And then they're like the hundred million views on Facebook. And then recently he went into NFTs because he was introduced and he went, what is this thing? This is amazing. And what's nice about him is a couple of things. He did a, a drop with Red Planet on uh, Saturday night. He did 6,000 packs of, he had different, different characters lined up with all his artists involved. It sold out in 10 seconds on the Wax blockchain. Super, and, and that's really cool because this is where people are going even in lockdown. And this man, Darren Cullen too, is an interesting man. At the start of lockdown, he was worried about the world and he sold his house, he put it into gold. And then he got worried about gold and now it's into cryptocurrency. So he's doing rather nicely, thank you very much. So he's quite happy. But what's nice about him is that he's not just helping himself, he's helping others. And I interviewed, um, he did a, a, an online uh, show, an online digital show for women called the Crypto Queens. Um, it was held across different uh, metaverses, including Decentraland. And there were 200 women took part because it's, this space is dominated by men. And so he was helping women. And interesting, one of the ladies that I spoke with, an American woman called Crypto Yuna, who is a traditional artist who used to sell her oils. She's now online and she's a stay-at-home mom by choice. She homeschools three kids and paints in her spare time. But her her income now equals that of her husband who goes out every day. That's exciting. And she couldn't, I mean, before she was paying, she'd paint and she'd, you know, earn a few bob, you know, her pin money. Now she's she's equally, and her husband wants to stay home and educate the kids, I think. Anyway, they want to stop over. That's really cool. Another, another really good example, Sky Water. This is a young London rapper. He's not terribly well known. He's not, he hasn't got a huge following at all, but he's doing hard, he's out there, he's a rapper, he's doing his stuff, whatever. I don't profess to understand rap, but he's, he's doing lots of whatever rappers do. And um, he launched his album at uh, the weekend. And this is a really good story. They didn't do too much promotion because it was very new for them. Um, so a couple of tweets were sent out. He, he did, had some nice curated artwork. There were some gifts and some giffy. So there were some sort of movable objects. Um, it, he's launched his, he's the first time an album's been launched on the Wax blockchain, possibly on any blockchain, the whole album, oh no, the, the King Leon, first on the Wax one, sorry. Now he made, that young man, he is a young man, he made 4,000 pounds over the weekend. And you might say, that's not a lot. It's a lot to him. Because he wouldn't make anywhere. He made like he made like two hundred in the last streaming stuff. Because Spotify doesn't pay them. So that young man making four thousand pounds in the weekend. There's more to come too as well. It's huge. It's a game changer for young musicians and oh, any musicians, whatever. Then the one down on the right hand side. That's an example of Islamic art. And I'm involved with this amazing project Marhaba DeFi, which is looking at providing Sharia compliant finance for the Muslim population. Muslims are nearly two billion in the country in the world. They can't access most of DeFi, decentralized finance, because they're if they live by the code, they're not allowed because of all the things about interest and excessive returns and stuff like that. 
But what the, this company is doing, A, it's offering halal compliant coins, which is a really nice idea because if you want to follow what your religion teaches you and also have access to this amazing world, it's great. But the owners are also setting up a souk NFT to help support people uh, promoting Islamic art and NFTs. And they're also uh, helping young kids in disadvantaged areas produce uh, graphical art and they're going to help them sell them. So it's all a really cool, cool stuff that people are doing. The last bit, okay, bit of a thing. That's my book. It's uh, Persons of Interest. I wrote it last year. It's a um, collection of 41 interviews of people from Andreas Antonopoulos to uh, John McAvee and lots of people in between. And um, I'm, I've, you know, I've written it and it's for sale on Amazon. And I get my few pence off them, but I'm also minting it as a, um, as an NFT book. And that's going to be exciting you know, with Mint Base, another another project. And I did 41 sketchings of all the my subjects. So I'm converting them into graphical art NFTs. It's so exciting. My original book, you get, you know, a, a nonfiction book and I'm, I'm not a, you know, a, a JK Rowling, whatever. So yeah, sales are very modest. But this way, it actually means that authors might actually get paid for what they're doing. So that's very exciting. This is another project. Oh, anybody who is artistic out there, reach out. Again, it's in the Wax blockchain. Michael Blue is a well-known character. He is a, a, a special, precious, precious metal trader turned crypto trader. He's big into philanthropy. He set up Uplift Na uh, Nation, which did a lot of work in Haiti in particular. He has, he has an adopted child from Haiti. So he's helping build schools and education there. And he's doing a new project. So his Uplift Art and Uplift World um, they all generate money for his philanthropic causes. Um, and then his new project is called Yoshi Drops. This is the character Yoshi here on one of the screens. He is a, um, a, a musician and sound engineer for 30 plus years, works with all the greats. He has some amazing music. So they're encouraging at yoshidrops.com people to come in and say, pick one of his tracks or come forward with your own tracks. It's like American Idol meets NFT Jungle. And they're going to pair them with art and with tracks. And the first one, minted one, goes to the artist of each case. And the rest are going to be sold in crowdfunding in like a little a drop box that's going to come every month to a subscriber base. And that money is going to go in, going towards helping plant trees and also um, philanthropic projects, most likely in the um, in Haiti again. And that's me. I drew that. <laughs> so I'm having a lot of fun. So there's amazing things happening in terms of of, of uh Companies that are, are looking for investment, Demerch, it's an Irish-based company, They're, it's globally, they're the ones that have brought Skywater to the project, that very modest project, but next month they're doing something with uh, Muhammad Ali and a, a drop from a London photographer with ABG Group, so that would be, that could be in the millions, so they, they're covering all ones and they're just gearing up, um, they are going for a, a private sale in August. Um, Marhaba, their private sale is open now. It's a very interesting project. And what I particularly like, though, is the NFT and the educational stuff that they're bringing to the marketplace, mm -hmm. helping a whole community get involved and helping people in disadvantaged areas. So that's basically me. That's my run through everything. I think NFTs are the best things in sliced bread. It's a game changer. It's not a bubble because finally, the stuff that we're sharing online, it's not copies anymore. It's, it's actual things. So that's me. Thank you very much.